Hey guys, it's Tom M from Tabletop Republic, and I'm here to go through my Bloom Mill deck that I use a lot at the Friday Night Magics here. So it's mostly Commander we play, and the Commander that I go with quite a bit is Jin Gitax Ice. I can never pronounce the second part, Core Auger. I just call it Jin. Uh, it's an absolute beast of a card. It does cost 10 mana, but for it you get a 5 4 with Flash. Every end step, I draw seven. Each opponent's hand size is reduced by seven. Basically, it means that unless they have a card that gives them maximum hand size, they discard their whole hand every turn. And I get to basically draw seven cards uh, every one of my turns. And because of the flash effect, I can do it just before my opponent finishes their turn. So that way they have to mill, uh, get rid of all their hand without, without realizing. Uh, it's... Mostly there is a sort of a threat. I don't play it a lot. I think in about 10 games with it, uh, I've only ever played it twice. Uh, the deck has about a 50% win rate, uh, roughly. Most of the time it's just people either forget about me or I can somehow get through it quite quickly. It's not the quickest of decks, but it is really fun. Uh, in it, I've got 36 islands. Uh, it's quite a lot, however, it is quite a needy deck. Uh, so we've got a 10-mana commander, and I've got some cards in here which uh, are uh, quite a lot, roughly about some about 10 as well. I think I've about, got about two that reach about the 10 mark. Um, in terms of other lands, uh, I've got really Liquid Tower, obviously, for my maximum hand size, and the Castle Vantress uh, gives me a bit of a scry option. I then have four different mana artifacts. I've got a Thought Vessel, so another max, no maximum hand size, tapped for a colourless. Heraldic Banner, so all my blue creatures get plus one, plus zero, tap to add a mana. Spectral Searchlight, tap, uh, choose a player, they add one mana of any colour. This is a really good card for politics, uh, so you can just leave it untapped and then be like, hey, I'll give you a free mana if you can help, if you use it to help get rid of a player. And try to use Amulet uh, to sack it to get a basic land in my hand. Um, so in total, that's, I believe, uh, 42 land out of the whole deck, which uh, is quite a lot. However, if I do add more cards to this, some of the land will go depending on the cost of the card. I then also have two reductions of maximum hand size as well. Uh, Folio of Fancies, everyone has no maximum hand size. And it's got options to draw cards or mill. And then a, a magic mirror, which does cost a lot. costs less to put for the later in the game I play it. Uh, no maximum hand size. And basically I draw the number of cards I drew last turn plus one. So during the first turn I draw one. Then next one I draw two. Then it's three. And so the longer that stays on the board, the quicker I mill through my cards. Um, then I have three counter removals. I have got exclude to counter creature spell and draw a card. I did also have a uh, reduced ash, I believe it's called, which is the same part from it costs one more mana. So I thought I might as well put this one in just to save me a mana. And I've got spell shrivel. So it's two in a blue. It's devoid. So if anyone blocks any uh, colored, colored spells, um, I counter spell unless they pay four. If they is counted, it's exiled. And another colorless removal, which is scour from existence. Just to exile a target permanent. Uh, there are ways to get this multiple times in the game, which is really useful. Especially if an opponent is like adding things back from my graveyard. Or removing some of my win cons. I then have a uh, graveyard removal. Um, so this one, I can attack it to exile every opponent's graveyard. This is really good, especially if I'm playing against a graveyard deck. Or if they have something in the graveyard, which may affect me later if I manage to get rid of it. If I think they have some some recovery, I could just play that, sack it, uh, and get rid of it. Then three other graveyard recoveries. Uh, perpetual timepiece. I can tap to mill two, or uh, two and exile it. Shuffle any number of cards from your graveyard to your library. It's brilliant if I accidentally mill out one of my win cons, or if there's a specific card that helps me get to the win con that I accidentally exile or is removed by an opponent. Um, mnemonic Wall. I can barely say words, so this is impressive that I'm actually meant to say it this time. It's a 0-4 defender. Uh, 
when it enters, return instant or sorcery from graveyard to your hand. It's quite good. Um, I had to get, add a bunch of creatures to this because I realised I only had uh, a couple of creatures, um, which really affected me because there were people just swinging at me and poking me to death with their tiny creatures before I could even get started. Then I've got Bond of Insight. Uh, everyone mills four, and then I can return two instant or sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand. And then I've just got eight sort of mixed creatures, uh, all doing different effects that basically help my deck. Uh, you've got Stone Cold Serpent here. Uh, reach, Trample, and Protection from Multicolored. Enters with X11 counters. Doesn't do anything for the draw part. It's just a really good reach creature in case uh, someone's whacking me with angels. So Eleonora the Discerning. Uh... Power is equal to the number of cards in my hand. I've had that be passing D20s just because of Reliquary Tower and things like that. Uh, draw a card when it enters, and it costs two more to target it, which is very useful for trying to keep it on the board. Vantress Gargoyle, I've got the boardless version, which is lovely. Um, it requires quite a bit to actually do something because it's a two mana for a 5 4 with flying. Can't attack unless defending player has seven or more cards in their graveyard. I've got quite a few opponent mills in here as well as self mills to help that. Uh, can't block unless you have four more cards in your hand. Pretty easy with this. Tap to uh, mill one. Oh, everyone mill one. One of my new cards in it, Mirror Mad Phantasm. It's a 5-1 with flying. Uh, for two mana, uh, one and a bow. Uh, I shuffle it into my library. If, they, if I do reveal cards until I reveal it, every card revealed goes in my graveyard, and then this goes on the field. So essentially for two... Uh, well, put it on for five, and then for two mana... I can mill out a random amount of cards. Could literally be the top card of my deck. It could be the bottom card of my deck, and I mill out all my win cons. So a very risky play, but I'd only probably play if um if if I do have a win con already on the board. Narco Moba. So one one flying. If it's milled, put it on the battlefield. Fairy Vandal. Uh, flash flying one two. When I draw a second, when I draw my second card each turn, put one one counter. Annoyingly, it's not every card you draw put one one. Otherwise, that would be ridiculously overpowered and quite expensive. Diamond Knight, I don't think I've actually ever played this. It's been in my deck since it started, but it's just never shown up. It's a 1-1 uh, Vigilance. Choose a colour, so I'll choose blue. Another cost of blue, put a 1-1 one, one on it. Uh, that one's really useful, especially in the end game, because I could uh, build up a massive creature with it. And speaking of massive creatures, the Nidia Kraken. Draw a card, I may pay one. If you do put a 1-1 one, one counter on it and create a 1-1 one, one blue tentacle, uh, not only do I get a beefy creature, I get... Uh, multiple tentacles which are really good at essentially chump blocking then I have four cards which I call the copiers uh, so I've got God Eternal Kefnet uh, the first card I draw each turn I may reveal it if it's an instant or sorcery I copy it and I can cast the copy and that copy costs two less and when this dies I can put it I can put it third from the top so it's really good in case I'm running out of cards and still need a good blocker Spock Double comes in as a copy of a creature or planeswalker with an additional additional counter on it. And it doesn't count as a legendary. If I choose a legendary card, so if I have Kefnet, it'll be good because I'd have two, four, five flyers. Uh, Swarm Intelligence, uh, whenever I cast an instant or sorcery, you may copy it, choose new targets for the copy. This is stupidly useful. It's been amazing in this deck because with essentially Opt, for example, I get to scry one, draw one, and then do it again. And Narset's Reversal, another card. It, I've played it with Swarm Intelligence before, which is quite good. So copy Instant or Sorcery, return it to my hand, and then I can choose cards for the copy. So it's a bit like Kefnet's ability uh, with it. So I play uh, a draw card. This doubles it. Then I play that to double it again. So it happens three times. It goes back in my hand, so I can play it a fourth time, uh, depending on how much mana I have. Uh, then I've got two self-mill cards, so I've got Tunnel Vision, name a card, I reveal cards until I reveal that card, every card revealed goes in the graveyard, and the other one goes uh, one goes on the top of my library. So it's a bit like the Mirror Mad Phantasm, uh, apart from I get to pick the card. Uh, it does cost six mana though, so it's quite an expensive version of it. And Deranged Assistant, uh, tap mill one, but I get to add a colourless mana, which uh, is quite useful. Obviously, it's quite a risky play if I if I just want the mana. Um, then I have four cards that are Scryers. Uh, Jace's Sanctum, all my instants and sorceries cost one less, and whenever I cast one, I get to Scry. Sphinx of Foresight, beginning with my upkeep, I get to Scry one. And then uh, if I have it in my opening hand, quite a task, because it's never happened before yet. 
Um, but I get to scry, scry three in my first upkeep. Um, Overwhelmed Apprentice, everyone, uh, every opponent mills two, then I scry two. Lens of Clarity is uh, probably one of my favourite cards in the game. I just get to look at the top card of your library at any point. So you can plan your next step straight away. You can't. It's not a scry so much because I can't change what's coming up. I can just look at it. Um, but it's uh, really useful for helping me plan my next moves. And I can also look at morphs uh, I don't control. I can always look at morphs I do control, but this allows me to look at morphs that I don't control, which basically stops all morph decks because I can just see what they've got and decide whether or not I want to attack them. I've got two cards which sort of require scrying. Uh, so Conundrum Sphinx, uh, when it attacks, everyone chooses a card name. If they rev rev if the top card is revealed to be that card, they put it in their hand. If not, it goes to the bottom. So obviously if I scry, I, I know what's coming up. And so if it attacks, it doesn't need to do combat damage, just needs to attack. I basically get to draw one. Uh, then Diviner's Lockbox, for one and a mana, choose card name, reveal the top card. If it is it, if it has that name, sacrifice it and draw three cards, uh, but only at sorcery speed. Then I have seven cards, which are scry and draw ones. So I've got precognitive perception, draw three, or if it's on my main phase, scry three, draw three. To Mio's epiphany, scry four, draw two. Unexplained visions, uh, draw three cards, and then if three mana, three blue mana is spent on it. Scry 3. This is probably the one I'd get rid of if I was to get a new, a new card on it because it's essentially just precognitive per, uh, perception for the same mana, uh, for, well, for the same CMC, but the scrying is sort of the wrong way around, so I'd, it can come in useful if I know the first three cards. Uh, opt, obviously the classic. Garrel possibilities, scry 2, then draw, and it's got flashback so I can cast it for its flashback cost, which is really useful if I run out of all ideas. Omen of the Sea, uh, Scry 2, then draw, sack it to Scry 2. And Witching Well, Scry 2, sack it to draw 2. Then I have 11 just simple sort of draw cards. Distant Memories, search your library for a card and exile it. An opponent may put it in my hand. If no one does, I draw 3. So I don't want to pick one of my obvious win cons in there because no one will choose to put it in my hand. So I just put one of, sort of my medium cards in there. So I put Nadir Kraken in there before and people have been like, no, we don't want Nadir Kraken in your hand. And so I get to draw three, so it's pretty useful. Into the story, uh, this is more of a late game card where an opponent has seven or more cards, I get to draw four. I never normally play it for that cost unless I've got Omniscience on the board. Visions of Beyond, draw a card. Same again, better effects if an opponent, or if a graveyard has 20 or more cards, it's really good for me because I normally have more than that. Uh, Glimpse of Freedom, I get to draw a card and I can escape it so I can exile cards in my graveyard. I've as you've seen I've barely got any graveyard recovery and that focuses on the main cards, so I don't mind getting rid of a bunch of cards. Uh, Waste of Memory, draw three, then player mills three. Most of the time I pick myself, uh, apart from if I am sort of running low on cards. Finale of Revelation, draw X cards. Now, uh, I never normally do the X effect where X is ten or more. I can shuffle, my, uh, shuffle your... Uh, graveyard into your library and draw x cards untap five lands and i have no maximum hand size because i never want my graveyard back into my library covenant of mines reveal the top three cards of your library uh they a, a target opponent may choose to put them in my hand if they don't i put them in my graveyard and draw five so it's either draw three or draw five so i've got no complaints about that winged words uh draw two cards For, uh Verity Circle is really good. If a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped, if it isn't being as an attacker, I may draw a card. This is basically an anti uh, Angie, because basically, if it, because it's not attacking, it just keeps tapping to uh, discard and draw. I get to draw a card for each time it does it. Uh, Twitch, I may uh, untap target artifacts, creature, or land. So I can, I pay the three, choose one of the ones, so technically it would, could only cost one and a blue to draw a card, but I can also use it to untap an artifact if I really need it. And Gazwick, the Wiz End, uh, three blue, and then X, X is the amount of cards I draw, and it's quite good because uh, whenever I cast a blue spell, I can tap a non-land permanent opponent controls, so it's uh, useful sort of in the end game if I'm trying to go, <laughs> if for some reason I'm going for combat damage effects. Uh, then we get to sort of the real, real meat of the deck. These are sort of the win cons that I aim to get when I play. Uh, so I've got expropriate in it. Uh, so these 
two are the extra turns. So I've got expropriate. Uh, so everyone votes time or money. For each time vote, take an extra turn. For each money vote, choose a permanent owned by the voter and gain control of it. So I'd obviously pick time, so I get at least one extra turn. And anyone else is going to go for money uh, because they'd rather give let me pick one of their things to take unless for some reason they've got a 100 100 trample in which case they probably want me to take an extra extra turn because i don't have much removal and then i've got plea for power uh start with you everyone versus time or knowledge time take an extra turn knowledge uh draw three cards uh then that's only if uh so i mean that one is for each vote this one is whatever one gets more votes so it's either draw three cards or take an extra turn so it's not as powerful as expropriate, but for four mana, it's not too bad. Then I've got three cards which relate to my Thassa's Oracle win con. So you've got Thrix the Sunstorm, uh, Flash Flying, Exposure Cast with CMC 5 or greater, cost one less, and can't be countered. Uh, when this is on the board, essentially, it's amazing to put one of the best cards, I think, in, in my deck, Omniscience, on the board. So not only ca it can't be countered, but it goes from 10 mana to 9 mana. Uh, I may cost spells from my hand without paying their mana cost. doesn't really work with Gadwick because with the X costs, I have to pay the three green, the three blue and then pay X. Or I could pay, play it for nothing and just do the tap effects. And then uh, this works with Thassa's Oracle. So with Omniscience, put everything on the board. I keep drawing. I keep playing all my artifacts and things with the blue mana. And then Thassa's Oracle, uh, as it enters, look at the top X where X is my devotion. So the blue symbols... Uh, put one of them, put up to one of them uh, on top of the library, put the rest at the bottom. But the main bit is, if I've got more devotion to blue than cards in left in my deck, I win. Uh, I've got three draw out cards. So this chase basically allows everyone to draw a card for its plus two, minus one, target player draws a card. And it's minus ten, so basically I'll be nice to people. People want to keep this on the board, but the minus ten allows me to mill twenty. Uh, then I've got... A Spanish Laboratory Maniac. Uh, I accidentally ordered the Spanish version because I'm an idiot. Uh, but basically, it has the effect of if I was to draw no cards when I was meant to draw a card, I win the game. Uh, essentially, Jace Wilder Mysteries effect. If you draw a card or your library has no card, you win. Uh, this Jace also allows me plus one. I can mill two and draw, or target player mills two and draws. And I draw, um, and it's minus eight, draw seven cards, and then... If your library has no cards, you win the game, so don't need to draw an extra card with that effect. Um, so the Jace sort of that Jace uh, is one of the main win cons, pretty much. And I've got the best combo here to say to last, where if I've got this Jace on the board or the Laboratory Maniac, I do Traumatize and Fraying Sanity. So Fraying Sanity, at the beginning of each end step, the Enchanted player, I will enchant myself, puts the top X cards of his of his or her library into their graveyard. Uh, where X is the number of cards that was put into the graveyard from anywhere that turn. So let's say I only play one spell which goes to the graveyard. I then mill one. With Traumatize, I put the top half of my library into the graveyard. So if I've got Jace on the field, so if I was to uh, draw a card with nothing, uh, draw a card with nothing in the deck, I win. Uh, put the top half of my library in the graveyard. At the end of my turn, this puts the other half essentially into the graveyard. And then all I've got to do is keep an opt or something to draw me a card, and I've won the game. So basically that is my Gin uh, Blue Mill deck that I play a lot at the Commander Days here at Tabletop Republic. Uh, let me know if you've got any things that you think I should add into the deck. I've had a few changes around. I've got a bunch of cards which I've taken in and out constantly. Um, but some of the core cards, especially there at the end, uh, as soon as I start getting into them, uh, the deck suddenly becomes unstoppable in one turn. People... Thought I had no chance if I'm down to like one life. I can still win it in a turn uh, by just milling myself out. Just getting a Jace out, mill myself out and play a draw card. And I've won it. Let me know what your favourite commander is. If you want to record your own uh, commander or other deck vlogs for Tabletop Republic, let us know. And we'll happily get you featured on the channel. But for now, thank you very much for watching. And see you at Tabletop Republic.